Hi and welcome back to Cut the Craggle. Over the last few weeks, I've been showcasing my wave of custom Lego sets based on the movie Ghostbusters Afterlife. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the fourth and final set in this series. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the videos on my first three custom sets. There's going to be huge spoilers ahead, so if you haven't watched a new movie yet, you might want to run away now. But if you do enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and turn on notifications. Now let's jump right into it, and the fourth in the series is... Dirt Farm Final Showdown. This set is based on the final showdown of the movie, where Phoebe Spengler goes up against the malevolent deity Goza the Gozerian, backed up by the return of the now legendary original Ghostbusters. I tried to balance making a set that would have everything I wanted with how I thought LEGO would realistically make this. I took some inspiration from the LEGO Stranger Things Upside Down set, borrowing the tile technique on the front of the house to give the look of wooden planks. In the movie, there are six of these large silos that Egon has cannibalized into electric capacitors. But I felt that three would be enough for this set. I can't see LEGO including more than that, especially as they are all the exact same build. Built into the front of the farmhouse porch is the pole lever and pedal switch that is used to arm the capacitors and then activate the concealed ghost traps buried in the dirt. As well as being the setting for the final battle, the farm also serves as the main location throughout the rest of the movie. So I wanted it to be filled with lots of cool easter eggs and references to other scenes. The door to the farmhouse is even the same piece used on the guys lockers in the Lego Ghostbusters firehouse set. The right of the ground floor is based on the study. There's some symmetrical book stacking in the corner. On the desk you'll see the same PKE meter from my Ghost Lab set, as well as a sinister looking skull carving. This room even has the armchair that Egon Spengler is sat in when he dies. And if you move that back, you can pull up a section of the floor to discover the hidden ghost trap that Phoebe is led to by his ghost. Over on the other side is the dining room. There's a simple dining table assembly in the centre, but like in the movie, it serves as more of a dumping ground for all kinds of paranormal themed clutter. There's the dancing toaster from Ghostbusters 2, a half drunk glass of red wine for Kelly, a Ghostbusters hot beverage thermal mug, an ancient map of Somerville written in cuneiform, and even Petrelli's mischievous traffic cone from Ghostbusters the video game. Moving upstairs, there's a small tiled bathroom with a roll of cheap and coarse looking pink bog roll down the back. And then there's green slime spilling up out of the toilet bowl onto the floor. Now this room is never actually seen on screen, this is just me tipping my hat to the official LEGO Ghostbusters firehouse set. The rest of the upstairs is dedicated to Phoebe's bedroom. On her checkered duvet, there's the laptop the young Spengler uses to look up more information on her grandfather's past as a Ghostbuster, as well as a bowl of popcorn she munches on while watching YouTube videos. I wonder if she likes Cut the Craggle. Propped up against the wall is a copy of Tobin's Spirit Guide. This book was first mentioned by Egon in the original 1984 movie and has featured in pretty much every form of Ghostbusters media since. On the far side of Phoebe's bedroom is a bay window with the chess set that Egon's ghost first uses to communicate with her. And in front of that, there's a chest of drawers with a stack of Xena cards on top. These, of course, are the cards that Peter used in his ESP test in the original Ghostbusters film, and they pop up again in Afterlife's mid credit scene. You may have noticed a few more cards scattered around the rest of the house. This set also comes with two buildable Terror Dogs. These are essentially recreations of the Terror Dog build from the LEGO Dimensions Stay Puff Fun Pack, but I've given one of them darker coloured horns that are turned up vertically, so that you can have one as Vince Clawful and the other as Zool. This set comes with a whopping six minifigures. First up, we have Phoebe Spengler. She's wearing her grandfather's old Ghostbusters flight suit. 
You can see that she even has the Spangler name tag partially obscured by the straps of her proton pack. I was never a big fan of the name badges on the official LEGO torsos only having the character's initials, and it wouldn't really make sense for Phoebe to be wearing a name tag with ES on it. Phoebe also comes with a brand new head, different from her last two appearances. She has this happy and excited look and smile, based on the scene where the OG Busters return, and then she has a second expression with a much more determined look for when she stands alone against Goza. Speaking of which, next up we have old flat top herself, Goza the Gozerian. Goza has printing all over her torso, arms, hips, legs, and even the sides of her legs. I had thought about using some pauldron pieces for the bony protrusions and crystalline spikes Goza sports in her revamped look, but I decided it was better to convey those using prints. It also means the differences between this and how Goza looked in the original movie are subtle enough that you could use this figure for both versions if you wanted to. Goza has two face prints. The first is this rather unimpressed, almost indifferent expression. And then the second is a very sinister, evil smile. Then we have the surviving OG Ghostbusters, Peter Venkman, Ray Stance, and Winston Zedmore. The return of the original Ghostbusters in the final showdown is a proper punch the air, cheer out loud moment that I thankfully didn't have spoilt for me before seeing the movie. Both Peter and Winston use the same hair pieces as their official Lego minifigures. But Pete's is in light bluish grey now, while Winston's is dual molded black with flashes of dark grey on the sides. Ray uses the Mr. Incredible hairpiece, a part I had originally wanted to use for my custom real Ghostbusters Ray minifigure. I think it does a great job of showing his receding hairline without giving him the same piece as Peter. And like Winston, it's dual molded with dark brown and dark grey. For the Ghostbusters face prints, I really wanted these to look like older versions of the existing LEGO Ghostbusters minifigures. So I did my best to replicate the same expressions and then add some more wrinkles and grey eyebrows. Like Phoebe, their flight suits have their full names, albeit partially obscured by the straps of their proton packs. And for Ray, I gave him a little bit of a bulge around the midriff to help show he might not be in quite the same shape he was 35 years ago. Finally, we have the ghost of Egon Spengler. His presence is felt throughout the whole movie, but it isn't until the 11th hour that he finally materialises as a full-bodied apparition. This figure was actually the very first thing I designed in this series, and I did it from memory after seeing the film just once. Of course, I've seen it a few more times since then. Like with the surviving OGs, I based Egon's face print around the original LEGO minifigure, and then aged him up and added the facial hair he has in the new movie. I'm really proud of how this one turned out, and I think he looks absolutely fantastic alongside my new Phoebe minifigure. This is by far the largest set in this series. 1,490 pieces with 6 minifigures and 2 buildable characters. With that in mind, I would imagine this going for around $114.99, and honestly, I would pay that much for this set. So there you have my complete wave of custom LEGO Ghostbusters Afterlife sets. This series has been a lot of fun to work on. I'm so happy with the finished results that I'm actually a little sad to be finished. That being said, I have lots of ideas for more custom projects in the near future. Let me know what you think of my custom LEGO Ghostbusters Afterlife Dirt Farm Final Showdown set in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications, and if you've done all that, well, you might as well give the video a like as well. I'll see you next time. Laters!